This video will continue from the previous chapter and click Next to open the main window for Step B of the Steel Bridge module. This step, which opens automatically since it was selected in the beginning of the tutorial, generates load cases, staged construction information, and post-analysis result cases including linear result combinations, extreme effect groups, and influence result cases according to AASHTO LRFD design code. The information generated in this step is used by the SteelBridge module to perform staged analysis and to designate the proper code combination during code check. Bridge loading information begins with live load parameters which set options for the generation of influence surfaces for vertical, centrifugal, and braking forces. These parameters also act on the composite section, comprised of the girders and the end slab. To begin entering our live load information, we'll enter the vehicular longitudinal increment field which sets the influence coefficient grid spacing in the forward direction. To verify that the input is correct, we'll start with a large increment, such as 10 feet, which we can later refine to a smaller number before performing final code check. To set the influence coefficient spacing in the transverse direction, we'll assign the vehicular transverse increment to 6 feet, which will again be reduced to a smaller unit before performing final code check. If you'd like the program to automatically choose a transverse spacing, you can enter 0 into this field. Both the centrifugal and braking longitudinal increment fields set the influence coefficient grid spacing in the longitudinal direction for the centrifugal and braking influence surfaces. Since we are going to omit centrifugal and brake force loading from this model, we'll enter zero in this example. With these fields omitted, the corresponding centrifugal and braking increments for the transverse direction will again be omitted and designated as zero. In the sidewalk field of the loading window, the module defines the width of the sidewalks at each edge of the bridge by using the information we enter for the loading, representing the non-structural thickness of the sidewalk. This sidewalk width will also determine the distance of the roadway from the edges of the bridge. For our bridge model, we'll assign one foot for the width plus barrier fields in both the positive and negative Y fields. Representing the thickness of the sidewalks, besides what is accounted for by the deck stiffness, we'll now enter the non-structural sidewalk thickness. Since we're going to ignore this thickness, which is typically used to apply extra dead load on the sidewalks, we'll enter zero kips feet squared. The next section, Strength, defines general line loads for the utility on the bridge deck structure during construction. The first of these fields, Wind Loading, is available separately for both strength and constructability and will be applied to the girders in the transverse direction. The module applies this load in negative and positive directions and takes the envelope at the code check step. For this example, we'll enter 0 0.02 kips feet squared. Next, enter the load for parapet or bridge rails, which in our example will be 0 0.382 kips feet squared. The magnitude of the load should be entered per linear length as the load is applied to the edges of the deck as uniform line load. Pedestrian load, which we'll exclude, is applied to sidewalk surfaces and should be entered as load per unit area. It is combined and enveloped with the vehicular live load cases during the code check step. We'll now apply additional permanent loading to the roadway surface, compensating for future wearing by assigning 0 .03 to the future wearing surfaces field, which is entered as load per unit area. 
Additional permanent load may be applied to the roadway surfaces due to monolithic wearing surfaces, to which we'll assign 0 .015 kips feet squared. Also available, utility loads can be specified by providing the start and end location along with the magnitude. These loads are applied as uniform line loads, so the magnitude should be entered as load per linear length. Under the construction wind loading field, we'll again enter the value 0 .02 kips feet squared. With Larsa 4D's staged analysis engine running behind the scenes of the steel bridge module, we can define the information used for staged construction activities such as the deck pouring sequence, screed movement, deck formwork weight, or to designate the incorporation of staged analysis between stations. Being that we're going to exclude screed from our bridge model, we'll assign zero to the following fields. Screed weight, which is used to simulate the screed movement from one end of the deck to the other during staged construction analysis, skew angle, which positions the screed at an angle, and screed movement, which specifies the intervals of the screed movement. To finish defining the construction loading information, we'll next enter the type and weight of the deck formwork weight. Since the formwork in our model will not be removed, we'll select stay in place and define its weight as 0 .02 kips feet squared. If strippable removable is selected, the formwork will be removed after each segment of the deck gains stiffness. As for the deck pouring sequence field, the surfaces that are poured and their order can be specified on this spreadsheet. Each pouring region is defined by giving a start and end station and the weight of the deck will be automatically calculated using the pouring region dimensions, the deck thickness, and the concrete material property. Of the options presented under the sequence menu, composite at the end designates that the deck weight is applied during construction and the deck elements gain stiffness after the entire deck is poured. Choosing Composite as Built within this menu will construct the deck with weight and stiffness simultaneously as each segment of the deck is poured. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to ignore this feature and click Next which will call up the confirmation screen at which point we'll again click Next to start the model generation process. Before the generation process starts, you'll be asked for a .lar project file name along with a .lspx parametric section database name which is used to store the custom section database which contains the sections used in the finite element model. With all of the required information now entered to create code-based loading and staged construction for our bridge model, the program will now scan the model to make sure no changes have been made to the structure's properties between step A and step B of the steel bridge module. As the finite element model is created, the module displays a status window which actively reports the elements of the model being constructed, along with a progress bar at the bottom of the page. Once this progress bar completes, the 3D finite element model of our bridge will display automatically within Larsa 4D's graphics view window and we can see the load, group, stage, and results explorers have been updated with the model's information. To begin exploring the structure groups created by the module, we'll first click the hide unselected button and then click the group tab at the top of the explorer window. Within the Bridge Module Groups folder, we can click on a desired group and choose Select to view the group within Larsa 4D's graphics window, such as for Girder 1, Our Bearings, Cross Frames, 
the deck and composite girders, which is then followed by the staging and the deck pouring group. Switching to the Load Cases Explorer, we see the deck formwork, monolithic wearing surface, deck weight, and wind load, along with the other load cases which we entered in Step B of the Steel Bridge Module. In the Construction Stages Explorer, we can see our girders, cross frames, and deck weight constructed on Day 1, and the deck hardens on Day 2. If we click on the construction wind load in day 3, then right click in the graphics window and choose show, we can select input loads and see the positive and negative loads of this stage. Moving on, non-structural elements are applied in day 4, and on day 5, wearing surfaces will come into play. Should our bridge model need to be revised, we can open a new instance of Larsa 4D to return to the steel bridge module, and then import our .larst file, whose general structural information can be revised in step A, or whose loading information can be revised in step B. Back in Larsa 4D's environment, the model created by the steel bridge module can be further revised to edit loads or the stages within the construction sequence, or peers can be added to the model as seen in this example. If stages are modified, it's important to reflect these changes within the time versus modulus of elasticity curve for the 3N effect within Ashto LRFD. To do this, we open the Input Data menu and select Properties, then switch to the Time Dependent Material tab where we'll right click LRFD 3N to choose Edit Curve for the Time versus Modulus of Elasticity, which is where the coefficients can be revised. In further regard to the LRFD requirements, there is no need to create load combinations before running an analysis since the steel bridge module creates result combinations within step C code check. Before we continue on to this step, we'll first run a time-dependent staged construction analysis to gather the results needed to perform the code check. To run the analysis, we'll open the analysis menu to select staged construction analysis and then switch to the time-dependent option before clicking Analyze. Once the analysis starts, Lars's analysis engine will begin processing the steps contained within our staged construction sequence. As we can see in this post-analyzed model, the Results Explorer will list the stages analyzed, which include DC1, Deck Hardening, DC2, DW, Live Load, and Wind Load. Along with these result cases, the Steel Bridge module creates additional result cases which contain the Live Load Analysis results for Ashto LRFD. To view the results obtained by the analysis, we'll first click on the lowermost group button above the Explorers, which allows us to view two Explorers simultaneously. From here, we'll turn off the Input Loads and Analyze Loads options within the Show menu, make sure Complete Rendering is turned on within the Graphics menu, and click the Hide Unselected button within the top toolbar of Larsa 4D. With the Explorers now set, we can select a construction stage from within the Results Explorer such as DC1 girder and cross frames, or DC2 non-structural. Now under the Structure Groups Explorer, we'll select a bearing, such as the bearing at 198.25 feet, 
and then open the results menu to select spreadsheets, followed by joints, and then reactions to view the reactions of the structure. To view the moment diagrams for a section, we'll select Girder 3 within the Structure Groups Explorer, followed by DC1 Poor Deck in the second Explorer window for results. Now under the Results menu, select Graphical, then Member Forces, and change the Axial FX setting to Moment MZ. Once set, we'll change to the simple rendering option, which will allow us to better view the results. As we can begin to see in this video, the SteelBridge module provides a powerful modeling tool, which when combined with the 4D staged analysis capabilities of LARSA 4D, provides an integrated environment for the design and analysis of curved steel girder bridges. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll open our new project file and continue with step C of the SteelBridge module to perform AASHTO LRFD code check and to take a detailed look at the code check reports generated by the module.